bought one of the coolest and most unique cases I have ever seen on Amazon because I wanted to build one of the craziest PCs ever. But unfortunately, it didn't quite go how I originally planned. So this is the crazy case that I found on Amazon and it cost me just under $200 roughly. And it's a Mars gaming case, it's called. I've never seen this brand before. It's a super obscure design. But the main reason why I purchased it is because I thought it would look really cool with my racing setup. So I want to build a new PC for my uh, racing simulator behind me here. And because this sort of looks like a wheel, I <laughs> thought it might uh, uh, lend in quite nicely. The color that I went for is red. I do think it is available in black and white, but those were out of stock and this was the only option that I had. Now, this is the second case that I had to order because the first one showed up and all the tempered glass side panels were completely shattered. It's like it had no packaging in the box. It was completely destroyed. So I had to send that back and then get a new one here. But this actually looks awesome. Look at it. It's really nice. So I'm not 100% sure how you're actually meant to get into this case because the screws on the side panels are like a weird triangle allen key for the actual attachment and the craziest thing is the tools are inside the case here but I, I can't get my hand in to untie the bag to get the screws to get the side panel off it's like a, a challenge now luckily because I do have an iFixit toolkit and I highly recommend one of these if you are building a gaming PC it has all the attachments that you would ever require there is the perfect shape that will hopefully get these open yes it works brilliant so we can now take the side panels off and get access to our screws I cannot tell you the amount of times that the iFixit toolkit has been a complete lifesaver, either when I'm building PCs, but also when I'm taking tech apart, such as my Xboxes and Playstations. It saved me so much time. Now, it looks like we're going to have plenty of space to put all of the components inside of this case. Now, at first, I was a little bit hesitant and worried that this case would actually be quite small. Because it's circular, I was concerned that the length of, like, modern GPUs might not be compatible with it. But it looks like our RTX 3080 Ti is going to fit perfectly inside of here. Because I've actually got some components that have been lying around for a while, such as that graphics card because when I built the world's largest gaming PC, I obviously upgraded to the RTX 4090. But we are going to upgrade to the new generation of AMD CPUs inside of here, and it's going to be an absolute beast of a computer that we're going to make. But first, before we take a look at the components, let's actually take a look at what this case has to offer. Now, considering it's some random brand that I've never heard of off of Amazon, the build quality is actually pretty good. The case has a complete metal structure with very few areas that use and contain plastic. And for them to have cut circular tempered glass side panels that have no rough or sharp edges is very impressive. Furthermore, this case does have a front panel I.O. with two USB ports, a headphone jack, a microphone port, and also a power button. So for the components that we're actually going to use, these are as follows. So for the CPU, we're going to be rocking the latest and greatest AMD Ryzen 9 7900X. This is an upgrade from my 5900X that I currently have in my main gaming PC. This is basically the latest generation of that, and it's pretty awesome. With a total of 12 cores and 24 threads, but the most impressive feature is the 5.6 gigahertz max boost clock. So this CPU is going to be pretty rapid. Now to go with this new CPU platform, we do need one of the latest motherboards and I've gone for the X670E range of motherboards rather than the B series because obviously we do have an X CPU. So this will allow much stabler power delivery if we were to overclock this. Now this is a gigabyte motherboard and it's an absolute beast. We've probably one of the most beautiful designs I've seen on a motherboard in a while with all of these sort of heat shield areas. Importantly, it also supports at Gen 5 uh, PCIe. So if we were to upgrade in the future to one of those latest and greatest Gen 5 NVMe SSDs that are just starting to release, you're going to get some insane performance out of this thing. And it's also going to future-proof us quite considerably. What I also like a lot is the rear I.O. on this motherboard. Obviously, it supports uh, Wi-Fi. It's got the uh, uh, options here for some Wi-Fi antennas, but it also has two Type-C connections, whereas a lot of motherboards only give you like one Type-C connection, and I have quite a lot of devices that use that, such as external hard drives, so it's good to have a few extra just to expand things out, so not everything's reliant on one port on the motherboard and a, an external uh, USB hub. Now, on the topic of NVMe SSDs, I've just kept it pretty simple. I meant for a, a Gen 4, uh, crucial memory here, two terabytes. I will run my Windows 11 off of this and also use it for game installs just to keep it simple because all we're using it is on the racing simulator. So we're not going to have tons and tons of games installed on it at once. But one of the things that I am most excited about is the DDR5 RAM that we're going to be throwing in the system. Now, I already have some of this Corsair Platinum DDR5 RAM in my master PC that's completely water-cooled in my streaming setup on the ITX build that's used for capturing gameplay and stuff like that. But this time we're going all out and we're going to throw in 64 gigabytes of these platinum sticks. Now, I have never had this much RAM in a PC ever. 32 gigabytes is the maximum that I have in most of my PCs. So we're going to crank this baby up to 64 gigs. And I've also purchased 
four channels of RAM so we can completely stack out the entire motherboard because I think it'll look really impressive for the aesthetics. And because of the design of the case that we're using, it's really important to sort of nail and fill out this whole case so it looks absolutely pristine and awesome. Finally, for the GPU, we are going to use my Zotac RTX 3080 Ti. This is a fantastic GPU and really I had no reason to upgrade it for the 4090 other than just for videos. And this has just been lying around the studio on a shelf. I have to admit it's pretty bad for about a month or two. So we're going to put this bad boy to use because it's still fantastic and it's going to power our beast of a gaming PC. Right, so I haven't even started the PC build yet and I've already found a massive issue. So basically, according to the instructions, it says it can support up to nine fans, which is perfectly fine. Now I've got a load of these fans left over from my last PC build and I thought, great, we'll be able to mount them here. But as you can see, there's nothing to mount, mount them to, nothing. like. Where's this meant to be mounted? Just stick it with some tape or something here? There's nowhere for your fan to go. So I assumed I was maybe missing a bracket or something, but I've just taken a look inside of the box and there's nothing in there. It's just an empty cardboard box. So <laughs> what are we meant to do? I still decided to continue with the PC build as I guess it might not be perfect, but there would still be plenty of natural airflow for me to sort of test the PC while I tried to find a solution of how I could mount these fans. Now the first step for me was to actually add the power supply. This required me taking out a bracket out of the case to make it much easier because the access was pretty restricted trying to fit the PSU inside of the case. I couldn't quite get the screwdriver in it, wasn't long enough so I removed the bracket attached the power supply and then put it back inside next I then prepared the motherboard now the motherboard required me to obviously put the RAM sticks in so I prepared the DDR5 RAM we got four of those 64 gigabytes so I threw those into the motherboard and I thought they looked really nice with the overall aesthetic of the board that we chose the gray on gray looks superb and then I obviously added our 7900x AMD Ryzen 9 CPU which to my surprise looked a lot different than I was anticipating it has this cool sort of a uh, design to the actual CPU enclosure itself which is a lot different to the older generation that I have uh, in the 5900x in my main PC at the moment after all of that was installed I then also added my NVMe SSD and to my pleasant surprise this motherboard supports way more NVMe SSDs than I was initially anticipating it can hold up to three in just that one enclosure area that I actually opened up. All the heatsink stuff was ready there for me to just peel off, throw the NVMe SSD straight in, and we were up and running. This is now the motherboard prepared, and I also had to decide what I wanted to do with the air cooler. Now, originally, this case looked like on Amazon, there was an enclosed radiator and CPU block that's sort of like an all-in-one water cooler that you could attach to your system. Obviously, that wasn't existing in the actual unit that re I received in the post. So I went out on Amazon and purchased this air cooler that will hopefully provide enough clearance for our quite large RAM sticks and also have enough sort of uh, cooling power for the 7900X. Not ideal, I would have preferred to have it on an all-in-one water cooler, but I'm confident that this air cooler will work pretty well. Once everything was prepared, outside of the case it was now time to put it into the case and this is where i ran into more problems honestly you're not going to believe this so because the product description on amazon was so terrible it literally told you nothing about this case other than it was like by mars gaming it didn't say what size motherboards actually fitted into here so i just assumed that it was sort of compatible with some pretty standard sizes your atx and unfortunately, I actually purchased an EATX motherboard, which is just a tad bigger than your regular ATX, and it doesn't fit. So I've just done all that, preparing that um, case, the DDR, RAM, everything, you know, upgraded the, the CPU for it to not fit. Now, what I've done is I've taken out a motherboard from a, a budget build that we did a few months ago, uh, showing how you could build like a really cheap PC for like $400. And that's like a, a slightly smaller than ATX board, if I remember correctly. And that fits perfectly fine but obviously the CPU in this thing kind of sucks. So as you can see with this slightly smaller motherboard, uh, it fits It fits okay and, and it's, it's gonna be all right. It aligns, we can fit it in no problem whatsoever. But this now means this PC isn't going to be any use whatsoever for my racing simulator. So I think we'll have to save these fancy components for another video. Also another huge design flaw in this case is accessing the IO. So you can obviously plug your cables in through here into the IO, but you can't really sort of access it easily. Plus once the side panels are on, there's no chance. So you're going to have to pre-route everything out of the case. So if you just want to plug something simple in like a USB stick, good luck with that. <laughs> Honestly, guys, this build is turning into an absolute nightmare. I don't even think it's worth it. Honestly, I have never built a PC in such an awful case before. In order to get this to actually function and work, it's going to require so much modification that I just don't think it's worth it. So I've managed to get the GPU in. I've just ran an old GDX 1080, because there's no point in putting the 
3080 Ti inside of this because it was, it was going to probably be too big and things like that. But the next problem is obviously we've got the PSU in here, but in order to route all the cables and things, we're going to have to create custom length cables because there's literally nowhere to put the mess of cables that would be without it being super unneat. Obviously, we already know that there's no way of mounting any fans without drilling any holes into this case, so airflow is going to be a little bit questionable. And furthermore, as cool as this case looks, we can't get the components that I actually want into it. We're using these old motherboard and, and stuff, and it's really, really not worth it. Honestly, it has to be one of the worst cases I have ever bought and used, and I kind of regret making this video. Been a bit disappointing this video, to be honest. But I'm not going to quit here on this mission of trying to find an awesome and unique case for my racing setup. This one just wasn't it, but we're still going to search and find more for a future video, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. And to avoid any further disappointment, if you do actually want to see a pretty awesome and unique system that I built with a custom water cooling loop and actually has two systems in one, you should check out this video next where I build the world's largest PC in the biggest case that money can buy.